the first question that'll come up on a lot of people's mind, whether they be Lutherans, whether they be lifelong Lutherans, whether they be just finding Lutheranism for the first time, why do we even do a liturgy? What is the point of having an order of service and having this this sort of you know historic liturgy that's been passed down to us? I mean, why can't we be like the Pentecostals who just make it up as they go along? Well, we're we're trying to accomplish um, a very specific purpose when we come together as Christians um, on a weekly basis or whenever we come together to to hear the word, and that is so that the ministry of the word might take place. And that's the ministry of preaching, and it's the ministry of administering the sacraments. In in a lot of ways, that's the argumentation of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14 when he's talking about, you know, an orderly service. He he, you know, we are a- admonished in the scriptures to have an orderly service. And one of the things that the Apostle Paul talks about is the fact that there were, you know, Christians who were abusing the the apostolic gift of tongues and he he talks about in both you know chapter 14 and the previous chapter chapter 13 if he goes on speaking in a tongue and it does not accomplish the teaching of the word then it's useless it's 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 useless it's being abused and so the the idea that we would have an order of service that you know going to one of the apostle paul's other letters that we would be having hymns and spiritual songs that everything ought to be done properly within the church. That's really, I mean, that's that's apostolic. That's an apostolic idea. That's that's a that's a principle that is put forth from the scriptures. So, I think that you know that that's pretty a uh, pretty good way of understanding why we why we do a liturgy. Yeah, absolutely. And we want to come together um, to accomplish all those purposes and. And what better way to do it than to follow in the footsteps of our forefathers in the faith from the ancient church fathers onward uh, through, of course, to the Lutheran Reformation and and over the centuries. We have this beautiful pattern that accomplishes all the purposes that we we want it to. We have a structure that that ties us to the past and to our tradition as, as the Christian or the Catholic Church. And so... What, what better form to use? In regards to the written prepared things, most of the people who who have a problem with this always point out the, you shall not do any vain repetitions, which I always tell them, how can any of these things be vain, no matter how many times you can repeat them? The Lord's Prayer, the collects, which is only repeated like once a year, and um, and tell them, well, none of this is vain. It is not vain, then you can repeat it how many times you want and it, it it and the reason the true reason why they're really against this is not because it's not because they they're trying to follow the bible or anything it's because of this um this phobia against you know if the rome roman catholics do this let's not do it and that's the only reason why you're not going to do it and it all comes down to that the 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 idea that everything that they perceive came out of Rome is bad, even though these things did not came out of Rome as it is. It it really does teach teach us how to pray. I mean, every every part of the liturgy is is teaching us something about Scripture, and this this really goes back to what Jesus taught teaches us in the Lord's Prayer, which we also pray during the liturgy. It's this idea of having, you know, knowing the God that we are that we are coming before, you know, knowing the basis, the the, you know, the reason why we can come before Him, and then, you know, pleading with Him to do things that we can't do for ourselves. 